اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب اشرح لی صدری ویسر لی امری وحل الفقتہ من لسانی یفقہو قولی اکرام المسلم Warning on harming Muslims Warning against harming Muslims Verses of Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says And for those who harm believing men and believing women without their having done any wrong they surely burden themselves with the guilt of slander and a glaring sin Surah Ahzab chapter 33 verse 58 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Woe to al-mutaffifeen Those who give less in measure and weight decrease the rights of others. Those who, when they have to receive by measure from men, demand full measure. And when they have to give by measure or weight to men, they give less than due. Do they not know that they are bound to be raised from the dead and called to account on a great day, the day when all men shall stand before the Rabb of all the words? Al-Mutaffifin, chapter 83, verses 1 to 6. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Woe to every slanderer and fault finder. Woe to every slanderer and fault finder. Al-Humaza, chapter 104, chapter, verse 1. Hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Mu'awiya radiallahu anhu narrates, I heard Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, Indeed, when you pursue the secret faults of people, you will corrupt them. Indeed, when you pursue the secret falls of people, you will corrupt them. Abu Dawu. No. Pursuing the falls of people creates hatred, jealousy, and many other evil promptings in them. By seeking and denouncing the falls of others, one may create obstinacy in them to continue their sins, thus worsening their deeds and relation to Allah. Bajlul Majhu. Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Do not harm Muslims, do not condemn them, and do not look for their faults. Do not harm Muslims, do not condemn them, and do not look for their faults. Ibn Hibban Abu Barda al-Aslami radiallahu anhu narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, O oh, the community of people, who have accepted Islam by their tongues and Iman has not entered their hearts. Do not backbite Muslims nor seek out their faults. Undoubtedly, he who seeks out the faults of his Muslim brother will have his faults sought by Allah and whose faults are sought by Allah, he will disgrace him even at his home. Abu Dawood No. This hadith is a warning to those who backbite Muslims, as this can only be the work of hypocrites and not of Muslims. Bazlul Majhud. The father of Anas Juni radiallahu anhu narrates that we went on an expedition with Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. People stayed there in a manner occupying so much space that they encroached the road. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent a man to announce among the people those who occupy much space or the encroach the road for them there is no reward of jihad Abu Dawood Umama radiallahu anhu narrates that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said he who beats upon the bare back of a Muslim unjustly he will meet Allah in a condition that Allah will be angry with him he who beats upon the bare back of a Muslim unjustly, he will meet Allah in a condition that Allah will be angry with him. Tabrani Majma'u Zawai Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu narrates that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once asked his sahaba, Do you know who is poor? Sahaba replied, The poor amongst us is he who has no money or property. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained, The man, the poor amongst my ummah, is one who will come on the day of resurrection with salah, with saum and zakat, but who had abused somebody, slandered somebody, usurped the goods of another person, had shed blood or beaten another person. So this one and that one will be given a part of the aggressor's good deeds. Should his good deeds fall short before he clears what he owes, then the aggrieved person's sins and faults will be transferred from them to him and he will be thrown into hellfire. Muslim.
Abdullah radiallahu anhu narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, To abuse a Muslim is disobedience and his murder is infidelity. To abuse a Muslim is disobedience and his murder is infidelity. Bukhari No, a Muslim who murders another Muslim negates his perfection in Islam and this could become a reason for his dying in infidelity. Muzahir Haq Abdullah ibn Amr radiallahu anhuma narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, He who abuses a Muslim is like one who is heading to his destruction. He who abuses a Muslim is like one who is heading to his destruction. Tabrani Jami as saghir Iyad ibn Himar radiallahu anhu narrates that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he asked Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, one of my people abuses me, though he is inferior to me. Should I revenge him? Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied, Those two who abuse each other are like two shaitan who insult and call each other a liar. Ibn Hibban Abu Jurayi Jabir ibn Sulaim radiallahu anhu said, I requested Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for some advice. He said, do not abuse anyone. After that, I have never abused a free man or a slave, a camel or a goat. He said, and do not consider any act of kindness insignificant. Speaking cheerfully with your brother is undoubtedly an act of kindness. Keep your lower garment up to the middle of the calf. If you so desire, then up to the ankles. Avoid its trailing, for that is the sign of pride and indeed, Allah does not look like the pride. If anyone abuses you or makes you ashamed for something he knows about you, do not make him ashamed for something you know about him, for the burden of that will be on him. Abu Dawood Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu narrates that a man abused Abu Bakr while Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sitting there, appreciating the forbearance and patience of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. He kept smiling. But when the man went on at length and Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu replied to some of what he said, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he became angry and left. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu went after him and said, Ya Rasulullah, he was abusing me in your presence. But when I replied to some of what he said, you became angry and left. He replied, there was an angel with you replying on him on your behalf. But when you replied him, shaitan got him and I'm not supposed to sit with shaitan. He then added, O oh Abu Bakr, there are three things, all of which are true. Number one, anyone who is wronged and he ignores it for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah will help him and strengthen him. Allah will help him and strengthen him. Anyone who begins to give intending thereby to unite ties of relationship, Allah provides him with much more because of it. And anyone who opens the door of begging, desiring to increase his wealth, Allah Azza wa Jal increases his scantiness because of, because of this act. Musnad Ahmad Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhuma narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, It is a major sin that a man slanders his parents. The Sahaba asked, O oh Rasulullah, could a person slander his own parents? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam answered, yes. If he slanders another person's father, the latter would slander his father. And if he slandered his mother, the latter in return would slander his mother. Muslim. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu narrates that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam supplicated in these words, said, Ya Allah, I make a covenant with you. Kindly never go against it, for I am only a human being. I annoy or scold or curse or beat any of the believers. Make this a source of your blessing, purification from the sins and closeness to you on the day of resurrection. Mughira ibn Shoba radiallahu anhu narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Do not abuse the deceased as you would thus cause distress to the living. Tirmizi. Note. It means that by abusing the deceased, his relatives would be grieved, but the one who is abused will not be affected. Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, 
Mention the good qualities of your deceased and refrain from mentioning their faults. Mention the good qualities of your deceased and refrain from mentioning their faults. Abu Dawood. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Whosoever has done a wrong affecting his brother's honor or something else must ask him for forgiveness now. Before that day, before that day comes when he will have neither dinar nor dirham. If he has any good deeds, then these will be subtracted equal to his wrongdoings. And if he has no good deeds, then the evil deeds of the one who was wronged will be taken and laid upon him. Bukhari. Bara ibn Azib radiallahu anhuma narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, The worst usury is disgracing his brother. The worst usury is disgracing his brother. Note, disgracing a Muslim is termed as the worst usury. In usury, the wealth of others is taken away and exploited for personal gains. Similarly, disgracing Muslim causes harm to his honor, and the honor of a Muslim is far more respectable than his belongings. Therefore, disgracing is termed as the worst form of usury. Fayd al-Qadir, Basl al Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Indeed, the biggest amongst the major sins is the attack of Muslims' honor unjustly. Indeed, the biggest amongst the major sins is to attack a Muslim's honor unjustly. Abu Dawood. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Whosoever holds grain to raise its price for Muslims is a sinner. Whosoever holds grain to raise its price for Muslims is a sinner. Muslim Ahmad Majma'uz Zabai Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu narrates, I heard Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, If anyone holds food from Muslims, Allah will smite him with leprosy and stringency. Whosoever holds food from Muslims, Allah will smite him with leprosy and stringency. Ibn Majah No, the hoarder is one who at a time of people's need, as grain is not freely available in the market, stores his grain secretly, waiting for the prices to rise. Mazahir Haq Uqba bin Amr radiallahu anhu narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, A believer is the brother of a believer. It is not lawful for a believer to outbid the concluded deal of his brother, or a purpose to the same woman whom his brother has proposed, until he abandons the intention of marrying this woman. Muslim No. Outbidding has several meanings. One of these is that when a deal between two men has been concluded, a third person asks the seller to cancel the deal and deal with him afresh. Never be. Muslim scholars must be consulted to learn the Masail, meaning the Islam's way of conducting business and other affairs. Knowingly proposing for a woman who, for whom a proposal has already been received and likely to be accepted is against the teachings of Islam. Fatul Mudhim. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika, shadwan la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. سبحانك رب العزه اما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين لا اله الا الله محمد رسول الله